Hello and welcome to the video lecture on introduction to financial econometrics. We will start the session with the definition of econometrics. The term econometrics literally means economic measurement. But the scope of econometrics is much broader than the literal meaning of the term. It can be defined as the science as well as the art of applying the tools of economic theory, mathematics and statistical inference to obtain empirical conclusions to an economic phenomenon. If you closely observe the definition, you can find three features of econometrics which are econometrics is a science, econometrics is an art and it obtains empirical conclusions. Now how does it become a science? For that first let me explain what is a science. Science is a body of knowledge based on theories that can be experimented. Similarly, econometrics is also based on theories, the theories of economics, mathematics and statistics. These theories can be experimented to prove the validity of our conclusions relating to an economic phenomena. And so we can call economic econometrics is a science. Now how does it become an art? An art is anything that requires skill and knowledge. In econometrics, an econometrician requires logical and reasoning skills so as to obtain specific and sufficiently realistic assumptions that will allow him to take the best advantage of the data available to him. So we can say it is also, a, also an art. Now what do you mean by empirical conclusions? It means conclusions arrived at through observation or experience that are verifiable in mathematical terms. So in simple terms, econometrics means using tools of mathematics, economics and statistics to obtain numerical results for an economic phenomenon. Now let us move on to the need of having econometrics as a separate discipline. The reason for having a separate discipline for econometrics are empirical conclusion to sorry empirical content to economic theory, expressing theory in mathematical form, economic statistics and mathematical statistics. First one, empirical content to economic theory. Economic theory makes statements or hypotheses that are mostly qualitative in nature. For example, microeconomic theory states that other things remaining the same, a reduction in the price of a commodity is expected to increase the quantity demanded of that commodity. Thus, economic theory postulates a negative or inverse relationship between the price and quantity demanded of a commodity. But the theory itself does not provide any numerical measure of the relationship between the two. That is, it does not tell by how much the quantity will go up or down as a result of a certain change in the price of the commodity. And it is the job of the econometrician to provide such numerical estimates. Or in other words, we can say that econometrics gives empirical content to economic theory. The second one expressing theory in mathematical form the main concern of mathematical economics is to express economic theory in mathematical form that is in the form of equations disregarding the measurability or empirical verification of the theory econometrics as noted previously is mainly interested in the empirical valuation of economic theory and the econometrician often uses the mathematical equations proposed by the mathematical economist but puts these equations in such a form that they lend themselves to empirical testing and this conversion of mathematical into economic equations requires a great deal of ingenuity and practical skill third one economic statistics Economic statistics is mainly concerned with collecting, processing and pr 
presenting economic data in the form of charts and tables and these are the jobs of an economic statistician the primary responsibility of an economic statistician is to collect the data on gross national product employment unemployment prices etc and the data so collected constitute the raw data for an econometric work but an economic statistician does not go any further that means he does not go beyond collecting the data because he is not concerned with using the collected data to test economic theories but in econometrics these data will be used to test economic theories and the person who tests the theories is known as an econometrician the last one mathematical statistics although mathematical statistics provides many tools in used in the trade the econometrician often needs special methods in view of the unique nature of the most economic data that is the data are not generated as a result of a controlled experiment so the econometrician like the meteorologist generally depends on data that cannot be controlled directly Now we will move on to the methodology of econometrics. How do econometricians proceed in their analysis of economic problems? What is their methodology? Although there are several schools of thought on econometric methodology, we will be discussing about traditional or classical methodology. which still dominates empirical research in economics and other social and behavioral sciences broadly speaking a traditional econometric methodology proceeds along the following lines statement of theory or hypothesis specification of mathematical model of the theory specification of the statistical or econometric model obtaining the data estimation of the parameters of the econometric model hypothesis testing forecasting or prediction and using the model for control or policy purposes so these are the methodology of econometrics now we shall classify econometrics econometrics can be broadly classified into theoretical econometrics and applied econometrics in each category one can approach the subject in two ways that is classical approach and bayesian approach here in this lecture we will be giving emphasis on classical approach so we will start with the first division of econometrics that is theoretical econometrics theoretical econometrics is concerned with the development of appropriate methods for measuring economic relationships specified by econometric models so in this aspect econometrics leans heavily on mathematical statistics take for example the method of least squares in theoretical econometrics the econometrician must spell out the assumptions of this method its properties and what happens to these properties when one or more of the assumptions of this method are not fulfilled so that is theoretical econometrics now we will move on to applied econometrics applied econometrics is nothing but the use of tools in theoretical econometrics to study some special fields of economics and business such as the production function investment function demand and supply function portfolio theory etc so these are the two types of econometrics Now we will move on to the structure of economic data.
economic data sets come in various forms while some econometric methods can be applied straightforwardly to different types of data set it is essential to examine the special features of some sets in the coming session we will describe the most important data structures encountered in applied econometrics so we'll begin with the first one that is cross sectional data a cross sectional data set consists of a sample of individuals households firms cities countries regions or any other type of unit at a specific point in time in some cases the data across all units do not correspond to exactly the same time period consider a survey that collects data from questionnaire surveys of different families on different days within a month in this case we can ignore the minor time differences in collection and the data collected will still be viewed as a cross sectional data set in econometrics cross sectional variables are usually denoted by the subscript i with i taking the values of 1 2 3 up to n for n number of cross sections so if for example y denotes the income data we have collected for n individuals this variable in a cross sectional framework will be denoted by yi for i is equal to 1 2 3 up to n because we have n number of individuals cross sectional data are widely used in economics and other social sciences in economics the analysis of cross sectional data is associated mainly with applied microeconomics labor economics state and local public finance business economics demographic economics and health economics are some of the prominent fields in microeconomics data collected at a given point in time are used in these cases to test microeconomic hypotheses and evaluate economic policies now we'll move on to the second type of economic data that is time series data a time series data set consists of observations of one or more variables over time time series data are arranged in chronological order and can have different time frequencies such as biannual annual quarterly monthly weekly daily and hourly examples of time series data include stock prices gross domestic product money supply and ice cream sales figures among many others time series data are denoted by the subscript t so for example if y denotes the gdp of a country between 1990 and 2002 we denote that as y t for t is equal to 1 2 3 up to t where t the small t is equal to 1 for 1990 and t the capital t will be equal to 13 for 2020 because 1919 to 2002 is 13 years time is a very important dimension in time series data sets because the past events can influence those in the future and lags in the behavior are prevalent in social sciences a variable that is lagged one period will be denoted as y t minus 1 and when it is lagged by s periods it will be denoted as y t minus s similarly if it is leading instead of lagging by k periods it will be denoted as y t plus k a key feature of time series data which makes them more difficult to analyze than cross sectional data is that economic observations are commonly dependent across time that is most economic time series are closely related to their recent histories 
So while most econometric procedures can be applied to both cross-sectional and time series data sets, in the case of time series, more things need to be done to specify the appropriate econometric model. Additionally, the fact that economic time series display clear trends over time has led to new econometric techniques that attempt to address these features. Another important feature is that time series data that follow certain frequencies might exhibit a strong seasonal pattern. This feature is encountered mainly with weekly, monthly and quarterly time series. Finally, it is important to note that time series data are mainly associated with macroeconomic applications. The last type of data, economic data that is panel data. A panel data sets, set consists of a time series for each cross-sectional member in the data set. As an example, we could consider the sales and the number of employees for 50 firms over a 5 year period. Panel data can also be collected on a geographical basis. For example, we might have GDP and money supply data for a set of 20 countries and for a period of 20 years. Panel data are denoted by the use of both I and subscripts where which we have used before for cross sectional and time series data respectively this is simply because panel data have both cross sectional and time series dimensions so we might denote GDP for a set of countries and for a specific time time period as YIT for T the small t will be equal to 1 2 3 up to T and I will be equal to 1, 2, 3 up to n. So these are the structure of economic data. The rest of the portions will be covered in the next video. So thank you for watching the video.